Yeah, I'm ready. Choose. Well, it was so much fun spending a little bit of time with Lemon Lime. I mean, anyone who can drop can you 30. Stop calling this man Lemon Lime? <laughs> I just refuse. Everyone has to have a nickname if they're going to be on the podcast. So we got to come up with a nickname for no. our next guest, Jermaine King, who's the sneaker professor. And that's not like a joke, is it? No, it's not. No, like you really teach a class on sneakers. It is the first in higher education history, the first three credit, three credit English course dedicated to identification within sneaker culture. Um, there have been classes at schools like Carnegie Mellon and Seton Hall, but they were student-led and they were uh, one-credit classes. This is a legitimate English course. Um, my specialty area is postmodern Southern Lit. Um, but again, I've been, this is a part of my life I've lived since childhood. So yeah, I had an opportunity to create a course and here I am. I'm going back to school. <laughs> I'm going back to I'm school going just to take, King to take sneaker class. class. Yes, to take Jermaine King's class. Now, what's your Twitter handle? My Twitter handle is at Soul Food Brand. And on Instagram, I'm also at Soul Food Brand. S O L E F O O D B R A N. I see what you did. Yeah, exactly. Did. And if you have any questions, make sure you hit them up on Twitter. Um, tell me about just going through the process of explaining to an entire university that the class that you want to teach revolves around sneakers and how ultimately you believe it helps students or how does it, what are you teaching them um, in the grander scheme of life? Okay, I'll show this short story and how this took part. Um, about seven, eight years ago, I was at an event on campus and there was a young man who was a freshman and he saw me at the event. Now, he said to his friend, like, who's that dude? i never seen that dude before. And he said, he's faculty here. He's like, what kind of faculty? Like, He said to me, he told me this later on. He said, I didn't know what class you taught. He's like, but I knew I was going to take it. Right, right. So he ended up in my world literature course. I had on a pair of uh, Battleground like, flight posits from like 2000. He's just dropping names like that. Like, 2000. In case you I know didn't those. Know. Yeah. I know both. He said that he'd never seen them in real life. Uh -huh. um, and like I said, this, you know, we have our professional lives, and then we have us, and sometimes they intertwine. People just knew this was a part of me. Like, I'm not always wearing sneakers at work, but it got to a point where universities are looking to reach students where they are. Right. And I spent just I've spent just as much time in my career talking to students, chopping it up in my office, talking about how to boom their averages, and boom their averages, and um, in life, I spent just as much time talking about sneakers as I'm talking about academics. So when we were given the opportunity to create courses that students might be interested in. You know, I proposed this, and again, it was received, and the members, like students, are breaking their neck to get into the course. So, so far, again, so far, so good, and we're going to attempt to develop it into uh, part of our pillars, into the interdisciplinary studies program. We're going to propose that pretty soon, but as of right now, we're teaching in English. Yeah. It's interesting to me because when you talk about shoes, you automatically think about hip hop culture. Mm -hmm. So, does that brand ever cross in 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 your teachings? And how how enthused are the kids to know that something that they relate to is being taught in the higher education field? Many can't believe it, and I think we we were talking off air. And when you actually just sit on air, like you take this class, there are people who I know that I have people just show up off the street. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just not just strangers coming off the street. They know of me. I know them. But they come in and take the class. You mentioned hip-hop culture. Everything about me, from the way I put on my socks to the way time I go to bed in the body is hip-hop culture. I was raised in hip-hop culture. The greatest thing about being 39 now is that hip-hop culture is now popular culture. Right. Like, literally, you know, it was weird in 1987 to see Fred and Barney use, um, use hip-hop to hip sell Fruity Pebbles. Now, I dare you to find some promotional campaign that does not use hip hop. So hip hop, sneaker culture is a subculture within hip hop culture, but to be honest with you, sneaker culture, hip hop culture are no longer subcultures. Okay, let's get deep on that for a little bit, because sometimes I feel as though um, hip hop culture is being taken away mm -hmm. or watered down because it, because it is so mainstream mm -hmm. and we're losing touch with it and maybe in, in certain ways losing depth. You know what I mean? It's just becoming, there's a ton of people coming out, constantly making new music, and it's not always great, but it, it's a hit. You know, do you think that the way that hip-hop has become pop culture is in a certain way ruining what made hip-hop great in the beginning? I want to say no, I want to tell you why. Because with any genre of music, a genre of music dies when it stops evolving. Um, hip-hop culture, hip-hop music is still evolving, even though there may be certain songs or certain styles that I don't subscribe to, yeah. but 
we have to pay attention that it's still evolving. You know, again, genres that stop evolving, they're like red tomatoes. And once the tomato is red, either you're going to slice it and eat it, or you're going to watch it decompose. Hip hop culture is not decomposing. It, again, I, I'm a child of Boom Bap. Like, people know me, love. I, I know I love um, New Jack Swing and Boom Bap. That's the dated part of me. But in here, it's just as much new stuff as it is stuff from the golden age era. So, it, is it worked now? Is it becoming too corporate? Yeah, yes. But we have to pay attention to the point that it's still evolving. It's right. still evolving. So, when you get these young minds in class, how do you, how do you? switch that message around from what they're hearing in their headphones, not being able to dissect it like you or I can because we had an opportunity to listen to rap when it was actually trying to give a message to move either a race or a culture forward. And to Maria's point, now you get some music that that has no, you don't need to think about hearing it. So how do, how do you move that forward with your students and make that relate in an educational way and, and maybe using lyrics or teaching about shoes and how they came about. How did Michael Jordan get a deal with Nike? What was, what is all of this about? How do you tie all of that into the education field when you when you are speaking to these young minds? Well, when I'm teaching classes, um, any literature course or any mass comm course, you know, I speak in references all the time. And many of my references are hip hop references. Um, Thank God they get them, right? <laughs> um, even the older ones. And it, I see students in class. Yeah, like, all on their phones. What does that mean? Um, but by, by literally meeting the students where they are. Like literally, you know, I, I'm a product of uh, two CIAA institutions. I'm blessed to work at, uh, to be faculty at Johnson C. Smith, another CIAA institution. Um, they are me 10, 12, 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. So um, pretty much meeting them where they are talking about how Marxist theory applies to sneaker culture, talking about how I once wrote a paper comparing Emily Dickinson to Nas. Uh, Emily, Emily Dickinson. Break that down real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I need the long and the short version of that. Like, I don't even know I where that came from, but okay. if you could do like a synopsis, sure. that would be good. Yeah, really quick, um, Emily Dickinson and Nas both are prolific writers, both prolific poets. Both were very reclusive. Did Nas not talk about um, Back in eighty was it back in eighty three I wasn't MC Sparking, but I was too scared to rock the mics and in the parks and whenever someone would ring, would ring Emily Dickinson doorbell, she'd run to the bedroom. Like didn't want to be around people, didn't want people as a matter of fact when she died, her request was to burn all this. Mm -hmm. And we just we get the leak works. But more importantly, um, Emily Dickinson, one of her most famous poems is um, My Life Had Stood a Loaded Gun. And we have Nazis, I gave you power. Gave you power. Mm -hmm. Both of them are speaking from the perspective oh, of a firearm. He just hits you. Now, in my, listen, in my PZ program, I had a Dickinson class. First day of class, he's sitting there. The professor's like, okay, I need you to drop something that's never been done before. And I'm thinking, oh, this is cool. I got to come up with some what hadn't been said about Dickinson. Yeah. So I went, some of my best thoughts have come either when I was cutting grass, in the shower, or eating. Ah, <laughs> I can relate. This particular time I was eating, and the more I read about Dickinson, I'm like, this reminds me of bingo, okay? And I had that paper published, but that's what that's one of the ways. Yeah. Well, you want to get someone like I can't relate to Emily Dickinson, but can you relate to Nasir Jones? Mm -hmm. And there you go. That's awesome. I mean, we have one more question for you before we let you go. But sure. what is it, or what is the best pair of shoes you've ever had? That one pair that's like I can't leave anywhere without it. Like I take it with me everywhere. This is my go-to. Everyone needs to know that I have this pair of shoes. For me, that without a shadow, I wrote about it in my book, Soul Food Digestible Sleep Culture. For me, without it, without a shadow of a doubt, mm -hmm. it is the Ewing Athletic 33 High. Really quick. Are you wearing those right now? Yeah, I am actually wearing the winterized, yes. the winterized version of the. Uh, we'll tweet a picture out. Don't yeah. worry, guys. Um, back okay, really quick. Back in 1990, the Knicks hadn't won a game in Boston Garden since 1984. Okay, every game from '84 to 1990, they lost. In the first round of the playoffs, back when the playoffs were five games, um, what the Celtics said for the record, the deciding game, game five, ended up being in Boston Garden and mix under the tutelage of Stu Jackson. He went on this crazy run. You go out, go to YouTube and watch the footage. You can even see Patrick Miller shooting a three from the corner and in the game after they had run him. But here's the thing, that issue of Sports Illustrated, my dad, I grew up, even we got Sports Illustrated every yeah. week. So this is where I developed my 
love of just reading all the time. Thank God it helped me later on. And that issue is the, I want to say the May, this is from memory, so forgive me, the May 12th, 1990 edition. On the cover, there's a uh, Washington Redskins jacket, Jordan 5's over somebody's back, and with a gun, your gun, I mean, your shoes on your life. But in that, in that magazine, there was a story about how the Knicks came and, and beat the Celtics, and there was the greatest shot ever. Uh, at that time, the Knicks sports 32 were high. And I remember thinking, like, Yo, I got these shoes. Got <laughs> this is what happened. I told my mom, like, can I get a pair of these? This was, like, on a Monday. Mom was like, you sure can. Next Friday when I get paid. <laughs> she was like, okay, well, go put them on layaway. It got Just like a mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All, all my Christmas yeah. friends run away. <laughs> go put them on layaway. We get them next Friday. I'm thinking, listen, if I have one talent, it's patience. I, I can wait 20 years for something. So... We wouldn't put them on layaway. I went back next Friday with the money. Go. That particular store had been robbed, uh. and they stole my layaway. Where'd you live? <laughs> Franklin, <laughs> Virginia. Um, I the, still got stuff on layaway. <laughs> <laughs> Stop by Walmart on the way home. We, okay. Was told that, um, I could either wait two more weeks or she could give my money back. And I'm, I'm looking. Listen, I was getting fresh. I'm like, give me my money back, and I'll go buy something else. And then the company went out of business. Um, and they didn't res resurrect the company till 2012. But Dial me up. This make sure this makes the cut. Make sure this makes the cut. Mm -hmm. I had a savings account from 1990 up into 2012, waiting for somebody to retro this shoe. So when it came out, I could buy as many as I wanted, and that is a fact. So yeah, it's my favorite. Wow. Well, thank I, went you. To, I went to Flight Club New York and lost my mind buying you and eyes, man. I don't even. I didn't know what they looked like until you walked in here. So I appreciate you dropping that. I'm going to take your class. What's, what size? What size are you? I'm 15. 15, okay. I'm a, I'm a 14. I'm 13. I buy them at 14. If I like them enough, it's a 14. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No big time. We don't have that woman problem. I'll be no shit. <laughs> Okay, no oh doubt. well, Mr. King, Jermaine King, the King of Sneakers. Thank you so much for stopping by. Tell everyone again where they can find you. Thank you for having me. You can find me on Instagram at Soul Food Brand and also on Twitter at Soul Food Brand. And the one books of the that you've books, written too. The books I've written uh, four books. Uh, okay. The one that's with sneaker culture is uh, Soul Food Digestible Sneaker Culture. Um, there's Life Within the Dorm. 21st Dates, the Poetic at Mixtape, and also Managing Relationships, build, uh, Bridging the Communication Divide, all available via Amazon.com. All right, check your boy out. We're about to take his shoes from him. I don't even know what to say. This is the most intriguing interview we've ever done. And, and we interviewed King Griffey Jr. I know. I'm on it. I am totally on it. Hey, yeah. Totally Thanks again, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Awesome.